Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome to a brand new game called Camp W. This is a story-based game where we'll be playing as a young witch who's spending their very first summer at summer camp. They're going to be hiding away inside the human world, so they need to keep their magic a secret, and I am so excited to see how the story is going to go. It's one of those games where the story expands based on the choices that you make, so I know we're going to have a lot of fun experiencing this together. Oh, it looks like we can choose between two characters. Either a boy named Lysander or a girl named Liliandra. My gosh, and I love her hair. Does she have a little cauldron? Well, that is cute. We're going to go with Lil. It looks like we can change her name if we'd like to, her nickname, but I think Liliandra is a pretty good name for a witch. Sounds very fitting to me. Oh my gosh, and is this the loading screen? Oh, that is so cute. Look at the big Loch Ness monster in the corner. That is adorable. I hope we'll get to meet the Loch Ness monster in this game too. It's the last day of the school year at Coventry Middle School, home of the Brewers. Go Brewers! Ahem, as I was saying. It's the last day of school here in Coventry, capital city of the Witching Realm. Were the powerful witches living here cast into a secret separate realm for their own safety, or for the safety of the humans they once lived amongst? Who's to say? Well, as the narrator, I guess I'm to say, but I'm not telling just yet. This is only the beginning of the story. That comes toward... Can I get like two seconds to set this up without another interruption? Okay, sheesh. Today, the Coventry's magical middle school is abuzz with young witches and warlocks, sorcerers and spellcasters, eager to begin their summer vacation, finally free from the shackles of education. And how do the young witches of Coventry Middle School spend their summers? Why, at which summer camp, of course? A wondrous place where sorcerer legends are told over purple campfires, spell pranks are cast, and lasting friendships are formed. It's a rite of passage for all witches, except one witch, that is. You, Lil. Oh, we don't get to go to summer camp? Instead of getting to spend your summer bedazzling cauldrons and playing ogre ball, you get to stay at home and practice your spells like you do every year. A famous witch once said, practice makes potion. That famous witch is your mom. One day, you may just be the realm's next best potion crafter if you can keep up with your mother's high standards. No pressure or anything. <laughs> None whatsoever. Hey, that's me. Oh, she is so cute. Alright, so it looks like this is where all the people we're going to meet are probably going to have their profiles so we can learn a little bit more about them. Very, very interesting. The other kids emerge in gaggles and clicks and bolt down the steps of the school, laughing as they rush into their summer vacations at light speed. But not you. Poor Lil. She wants to go to summer camp so bad. You may have just finished the seventh grade, but today your apathy is operating at a tenth grade level. As far as you're a witch of a mother, Myla is concerned. You haven't earned the right to relax. You barely got by with bees at school this year, so this summer, like every other summer, will be spent getting ahead in your alchemy studies. As you cross the courtyard, a tiny orange squirrel dive bombs down from a tree overhead and lands in your hands. Oh my goodness, a tiny squirrel? Nugget! That is the roundest squirrel I have ever seen. Hey, why so glum? What, did you sit on your wand again? <laughs> and here's the squirrel. Nugget. My familiar, small squirrel, big heart, even bigger attitude. Oh, so Nugget is her little witchy familiar? Cool, okay. If you soaked a half pound of fluff in distilled sass extract and then cast a spell bringing it to life, you'd have Nugget. Yeah, you can tell just from that expression on his face that he's going to be quite the handful. You know why Nugget. Every year my classmates go off to summer camp and every year mom makes me stay home and practice my craft. Look on the bright side. Every year you get to spend summer with me. When I think about it, I feel sorry for all those other kids and their nuggetless summers. 
anyway, Gadgy is still waiting for us to hit up the orchard on the edge of town so she can make some of her famous summer brandy wine. You know I can't carry all of those pilfered fruits on my own. Nugget has been the family familiar for three generations, passed down from your grandmother, Gachi, to your mother, Mila, and finally to you. I don't want to say that Nugget is old, but he's still sore over not getting credit for the invention of peanut butter. Ooh, you might be my favorite character, then I do love peanut butter. Running will only get me home faster. Why rush? Mom is just going to ambush me with her yearly summer study plan as soon as I walk through the door. Her standards are impossible to meet. Everyone else goes off and has fun together all summer while I'm inside for two months picking the eyes out of dead frogs. Living with Myla can be a trial. If anyone knows that, it's me, but I survived and so will you. You can't let one witch with a broomstick up her butt ruin your whole summer. And you gotta admit, her potion-making skills can be quite useful. She hooked me up with a slimming serum, and I must say I am looking good. Ooh, he used to be even rounder. Nugget strikes a pose that shows off his, uh, figure. He looks like an orange, grew a head and a tail, but go with it. Hey, you are looking fabulous, Nugget. Ooh, okay. So we get to choose what to say now. I'll show you good looking, I'm better on my own, or I just want my summer back. The poor thing, she just wants to have fun this summer. I don't care if she can turn a clay brick into a gold bar, I just want my summer back. She does this every year. It's bad enough having her looking over my shoulder. Summer is supposed to be fun. I've literally never had a fun summer. Drama alert! This will be our 12th summer together, and I can say for a fact we've had some really great times. Like that time Gadji accidentally knocked you into one of her brandywine barrels and we all thought you ran away. And by the time you got out, your entire coat was dyed red. You looked and smelled like a walking, talking cherry. I had to drink an entire gallon on the spot just so I had room to breathe before I could make my escape. You slurred for an entire week after that. It was pretty cute, I guess. See, great memories. In no time at all, Coventry Middle School is a ghost town. Everyone is probably picking out their bunks by now. Let's get home. I'm sure it won't be as bad as you think. And when it's actually worse, you can stay in and do my lesson plans while I sneak out into town. Oh, the poor thing. I feel so bad for our little witch. So, I think I'm starting to see why she's going to end up sneaking into the human realm. When you arrive at home, the whole house is buzzing with activity. Wonder if her mom is going to be here? As you and Nugget walk into the kitchen, workers whiz out past you, hustling cameras and lighting equipment out of the room. Oh, are they actually filming here? Looks like your mom is wrapping up the new season of her show taping for Potion TV. Oh, they did say that she was like a world famous witch. I guess it's because she's like a TV star. For someone who insists she doesn't even watch television, she sure is on a lot of it. At least she should be distracted enough that we can grab a snack and get out of here without her noticing. You try and keep a low profile by ducking behind a costume rack while Nugget raids the fridge but a pesky production assistant comes by and rolls it away, leaving you exposed. You're home early. Ooh, is this her mom? It's not your mom. It's her mom, your grandmother, Gadgy. Oh, look how cute she is. Everyone calls her Gadgy because when you were little, you couldn't pronounce Gadjwina Doodlefina, a weird name even by witch standards. If they're just going to let everyone out early on the last day of school, why even have it at all? Very, very good point, Grandma Gadji. Oh, she is the cutest, the best hugger in Coventry. Yeah, I'm sure that little Lil could probably agree to that. Right? That's what I'm saying. But then you wouldn't emerge into a beautiful, sunny summer day. Starting your vacation at the end of the day would be so anticlimactic. I think this way is much better. Perhaps the school district should stick to teaching and leave the poetic send-offs to someone else? Oh, this must be her mother. <laughs> oh, hi, Mom. Ooh, look at her. Yeah, she looks pretty strict, doesn't she? So much for going unnoticed. Yeah, another character in the book. Oh, they actually go together. Yeah, Mila or Myla. 
My little family is growing. My mom, the super witch. So it sounds like she really has a lot of high hopes for her daughter. And it sounds like Lil isn't too interested in what she wants her to do. But since you're home early, I can use the soundboard before it gets packed up for the day. Myla reaches down and presses a button. A loud fart noise resonates through the room. Oops, wrong button. Why do we even have that button? Myla pushes another button. Ominous, suspenseful music begins to play. Myla's eyes lock onto you, and in her best game show voice, she says, Lil, are you ready to test your potion crafting skills? Pop quiz on the first day of summer. I think you've set some sort of new record, Myla. Oh, so she does like a game show? Interesting. I'll lighten up, it's just a little game. I won't apologize for trying to make learning fun. Apparently, your gadgy would like to see you lay around all summer like a lump. That or she just loves me. One or the other, but who can tell? Love is looking out for your future by pushing you to be the best you can be. Are you sure you're not confusing love with military school? Oh, Nugget. He is definitely my favorite so far. Full of sass, just like they said. If I let you fall behind in your studies, that wouldn't be love at all. Then we'd all just be a bunch of dull humans. Don't fill the poor child's head with this nonsense about humans. They're not dull, they're just now witches. Our craft makes us different, but it doesn't make us better. I wonder if Gachi has been to the human realm. Now it's Myla getting the lecture, and it clearly isn't sitting well. If your mother really wants to teach you something, she should give a lesson in epic eye rolls, which she is masterful at. I don't get it, Lil. When you were younger, I couldn't keep you away from my garden, picking herbs and inventing little potions of your own. I saw myself in you, always excited to learn. It was so adorable. But as soon as you hit middle school, you apparently got way too cool for your family, and your grimoire hasn't seen a new recipe written in it in ages. Sounds like Lil must be developing some new interest as she grows, and it seems like her mother isn't quite so ready to let the past go. What happened to that little witch I used to know? Myla, you can drop the dramatics. The camera's already got packed up. Nobody wants to be a little witch forever. Lil, if you want a break, I say you take one. We'll be here for you whenever you need us. Gadji gives you an extra long hug, but when she lets you go, Myla is still there, arms crossed, waiting for you to step up to her challenge. You know that even if you put it off, she won't let this go. It's like this every summer. Fine, let's get on with it already. Myla holds her hands apart in front of her and quietly recites a short spell. A sudden thunder pierces night, as magic wonder, wild affright, as witches see the second sight, I call the moon to show her light. The lights overhead change position and point directly at the cauldron in the center of the room, which is already bubbling and smoldering. I've arranged a little experiment using ingredients left over from today's shoot. The potion in front of you is nearly complete. It needs only one additional ingredient to be finished. Any witch worth their weight in woodbine should be able to tell what this is and what it needs. So, are you up to the challenge? Three ingredients sit on the counter in front of you. Oh boy, our very first potion. You carefully examine the bubbling cauldron. A slightly sweet smell wafts out from it, but you're not entirely sure what exactly it smells like. Your mind has drawn a complete blank. All you can think of is the summer sun shining down on happy kids as they arrive at camp. It could be a health potion, which would need spit of new. But it could also be a sleeping potion, awaiting velvet leaf extract. Or maybe it's a love potion, missing its tears of the forlorn. You know, potions are something that you really don't want to be wrong about, because if you drink the wrong one, you're going to be in for quite the shock. But you're not really sure. Love potion, sleeping potion, or health potion, eeny meeny miny mo. Oh my gosh, like literally, eeny meeny miny mo. Uh, well, this looks cute, with a little flower on it. I think this is probably the health potion? Or is it the love potion? I think she said that the health potion takes a spit of a newt or something. Well, I'm gonna go with the one in the middle because it looks really, really cute. Based on the smell, you figure this is meant to be a sleeping potion. You reach for the bottle of amber velvet leaf extract, which Gadgie makes herself from the yellow petals of the velvet leaf plant's flowers. 
You add just a few drops and step back. The pot roils and belches. But the bubbling quickly subsides and the contents of the cauldron goes cool and still. No, we made the wrong choice. After a moment, Myla reaches out as if to dip her hand into the pot, but she cannot. In just seconds, the boiling potion has turned ice cold. It's hard as a rock and frozen in place. Wrong one. This is going to take a pickaxe to clean out. Or you could just put it out in the sun, right? Didn't you get ten more cauldrons like that in your last endorsement deal? You know that's not the point. Cauldrons come and go, but you only get one chance to make your mark on this world. All a witch has is their ability to cast spells and create potions. This was supposed to be a pot of calm water, which is pretty much a potions 101 recipe. Oh, we didn't even have that choice. See, we were destined to fail. What do they even teach at that school? This old chestnut again? You shrug your shoulders as your mother lays the same lecture on you as she does every year. It's mostly dodgeball. Alright, alright, I think we've quizzed enough for today. Lil, why don't you and Nugget take a walk and cool down a bit? It's beautiful outside. I need to get started on a celebratory summer feast, so maybe you'd like to pick up some flowers for a centerpiece? Anything to be out of here. Alright. As you make your way into the quiet woods of Coventry, your house recedes into the background. A thick layer of leafy cover creates a shady path to walk amongst the trees. Can you believe her? Who gives their kid a pop quiz on the last day of school? That was pretty rough. I wouldn't worry about it too much, though. Gadgy has your back. There's a woman who really appreciates the sanctity of summer. It's not just about today, it's all the time. I thought that once Mom got really busy with her talk show, her line of beauty products and the subscription potion delivery box she just launched, that she'd be busy enough to leave me alone. Apparently not, though. Beneath your feet, you follow a faint path down a trail you've walked with Gadgie on many summer afternoons like this. All my life, I've been doing what she wants me to do. I want to forge my own path, make my own friends. You stop in your tracks, turn 90 degrees, and start heading in a new direction, just like that. Ah, huh, carving our own path now. And immediately the sky grows a little darker, and the woods get a little quieter. Ooh, maybe that wasn't a good idea. Watch out, world, it's my time. Nugget eyes the shadows in the distance and decides to hop up onto your shoulder. At least it is until it's dinner time. That's my time. Nugget, you are literally the best. As you walk, you see a big mushroom growing on top of a dead old root. You decide that its shape and color look enough like your mother that it's no longer welcome in these woods. You step up, tee off, and kick it toward a big pile of leaves a few yards in front of you. Your aim is right on point, but before you can be too impressed with your budding sports skills, you're surprised to see the shroom bounce right back out of the pile and land at your feet. It looks like it hit some sort of big spider web. Did you see that nugget? Your fine kicking form? I did. You really showed that mushroom who's boss. But if you mean that odd bounce, I've dived into my fair share of leaf piles and that's not usually how they work. You hesitantly approach the pile and realize that it's definitely not a normal formation. The whole thing is held together with fine silk, almost invisible unless looked at from the exact right angle. Who put this here? Possibly the world's sneakiest spider? This isn't the best disguise. If someone were trying to hide something out there, I wonder why they wouldn't use an obscuring spell to cover it up. I suppose that if you wanted to hide something from another magic user, you might want to do that the old-fashioned way, so they couldn't sense it. You can't really counter a pile of leaves with a magic spell. But maybe it's just not that important? I guess they won't mind us checking it out then. Some things are best left... Before Nugget can dispense too much wisdom, you tug on the silk string and it snaps. Twigs and leaves fall to the ground, uncovering an old stone altar. Ooh. Looks like somebody's been here, too. A pile of rocks sits in front of you, carefully stacked into a beautiful little table. Moss cascades down from the sides, as if it has been part of these woods for a long time. Ancient antlers adorn the top, old beads and amulets hung from its points. On the surface of the table, among some melted candles, are three objects. It smells smoky, as if freshly burnt. 
some sort of offering? Looks more like a raccoon's yard sale. Either way, we shouldn't touch it. Well, I wonder if Nugget knows something about this. He seems to have some sort of idea of what we're looking at. Maybe not, but at least I have a very nimble lookout who can tell me if anyone is coming. Ahem. Yeah, yeah, fine, but please be careful. If you touch anything, there's some hand sanitizer in your bag. Nugget sighs, collects himself, and then takes off scurrying up a nearby tree. In front of you sits a lock of hair, a small purple flower, and a gold locket. Which item would you like to examine? Okay. Well... Let's go with the flower again. Last time we chose the flower right in the middle, so let's see what this thing is going to do. A small purple flower sits at the center of the display. It's star-shaped with a faint amber glow at its center. And it's super, super pretty. While it looks delicate with long, thin petals, the edges of each petal are razor sharp. It's not a bloom that you're familiar with. You hold it to your nose, but don't pick up any specific fragrance. Hey, Nugget, you ever see a flower like this? Am I supposed to be keeping watch, or am I supposed to be helping you solve mysteries? <laughs> Squirrels, right? As you turn the flower in your hand, one of the sharp edges catches your fingertip. Ouch! A single drop of blood falls from your finger onto the stone surface below. It sizzles and pops. You hold your hand out to feel the warmth, but it's totally cool. When you look at your fingertip, it didn't even leave a mark. While this sounds very spooky, you're a witch after all. In this realm, it's actually not that weird, so you just shrug it off. Yeah, totally normal witch behavior. I suppose if this flower was important, they wouldn't have left it in the woods. Besides, I'm sure they can just grow more. You place the flower into your bag, careful not to catch it on your finger again. Oh boy, we're pilfering the items on the altar? That doesn't seem like such a good idea. Now whose hair is this? You gently lift the lock of hair off the stone surface. It's brown, so we know that it's not like Gadgies or a mother's. But I wonder who was here. A ribbon is wrapped around it, but it might not even need that because it seems to be held together by some sort of wax or pomade. The end is charred, and as you put it close to your nose, you determine this is definitely the source of that smoky smell, in addition to a leathery musk. It smells a bit like an old man, the kind you might wave a pipe around the air while telling stories that start with back in my day. Oh man, it's like some old man's mustache. Once you've gotten a good look, you set it down and wipe your fingers off on a leaf. Yeah, we're not going to put that inside our backpack, thank you very much. The locket is small and delicate with an ornate carving on the outer gold shell. It has a clasp, but it's already slightly open when you find it, so you open it up the rest of the way. When you look inside, you see that one half has a faded photo cutout in it, while the other is empty. Based on the yellow patina of the photo, you guess that it's very, very old. The face in the photo is that of a beautiful young woman with some outrageous earrings. Oh my gosh! Those are our grandma's earrings, aren't they? Those giant earrings that she wears? She actually looks, well, a lot like me. Nugget comes down from the trees to get a look. Yeah, this is an old photo of our grandma. He sticks his little nose right up to the locket and examines it. I can see where you're coming from. She really does. Is that the excuse you're going to use when you pocket someone else's locket? I wasn't going to steal it. Yeah, but you did kind of steal the flower. I was just going to take it home to show Gadgy. You know, she'd get a kick out of this, and maybe she could help me find the owner with a tracer spell. A slightly better excuse, but just slightly. You look over your shoulder, but the forest around you is still in quiet, as you slide the little locket into a secret pocket in your bag. It shouldn't be out here alone. I'm going to take good care of it. We wouldn't want it to get stolen. <laughs> oh, I love Nugget. Having looked at everything on the altar, you stand in the woods and contemplate what it all might mean. Now that you have fully desecrated someone's altar and taken their things, maybe we should think about heading home. What's the big rush? Maybe while we're here I could cast a spell that finally frees me from another homeschooled summer. You couldn't even concoct a cauldron of calm water. I don't think you've got the chops to manipulate time and space. A two squirrel? No one in this family respects me, not even a little. You're in middle school. The only people who respect you are in elementary school. 
For every other kid, this is supposed to be the best day of the year next to Witchmas. <laughs> Witchmas, oh my gosh. But no, not for Lil. As you shout, leaves begin to swirl around your feet. Spend your whole life studying so that you can be the greatest witch in the realm, and for what? To boss your kids around someday? To get your face printed on a billboard so everyone knows how great you are? That's not the type of witch I ever want to be. I want to get out of here and become my own witch. Hey, kiddo, you really gotta chill. This is probably not the place to. In a fit of rage, you slam your fist down the altar, and as you do, energy radiates outward throughout the forest, shaking every tree around you. The altar shocks you and sends you backwards. You slam against a tree, and your vision goes black. Ooh. When you open your eyes, a beautiful shimmering portal stands open before you, crackling with an immense power. Are you seeing this? You mean that hole in the fabric of our reality? Or that funny looking caterpillar over there? Of course I'm seeing this! We gotta go now. This is not good. This is very bad. Shh. As of looking out a window, you can see another scene beyond, through the portal in front of you. On the other side are woods, much like the ones around you, but filled with the different trees, plants, and flowers. You stare through, waiting for something to happen, but nothing does. As you extend your hand, you can feel a warmth coming through. While the forest around you has grown cold, it seems much nicer on the other side. It's lush and green and glowing. Oh, you definitely better use the hand sanitizer after that. I need to know what this is. But do you, though? <laughs> you take a deep breath and... Could you not? But you do. You coming with us, Nugget? I really hope you are, because I don't want to leave you here. You reach through the portal and hold out your hand. A beam of sunlight lands in your palm. I have a really good feeling about this. Famous last words. You should be terrified, but the warmth just feels so nice. It makes it easy to forget. You stand and soak in the feeling. Suddenly, you're much happier than you were a moment ago. But when you try to pull your hand out, it's stuck. You plant your feet firmly and pull back, but it won't give. You pull harder, and this time something pulls back. Nugget, it won't let go. Nugget hops down and pulls at your leg, but to no effect. The portal swirls faster and yanks you right off your feet and through head first, squirrel companion and all. All right, so it sounds like we're going through the portal. I think this might be a good place for us to end our first episode. And next time, we'll see what's waiting at the other end of the portal. So I hope you guys are enjoying this game so far. It's a lot of story, but I really, really love it. And I can't wait to see what sort of adventures we're going to get into next. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!